Hey everybody, specialist in nothing, back again, where we talk about anything, but we specialize in nothing. As always, Danny and Joe, you guys want to say what's up? How's it going? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Welcome back. back. We gave you the awkward to this week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll be taking your order tonight. Yeah, there you go. That's a good is way. There any, is there anything I can get you? He is drink? so fucking corny. Maybe an alcoholic <laughs> beverage to start the evening. I'll let you look over the specials. I'll be right back with your dirty martini. <laughs> nah, but for people that don't know, uh, the three of us met in the restaurant industry, and um, in the we business. personally just always had so many funny experiences that we thought that this would be a fun episode to put together. This is also known as waiter rant. Because yeah. we're going to sit here and bullshit about all the fun times we had and all the shit. Mm, this is a thing, man. People actually... Oh, no, yeah. Waiter. I got a Wikipedia on this. Absolutely. I know I haven't had one for the last few episodes with what would you rather and what if and this and that. But Frankopedia for the night is uh, to speak or shout at length in a wild, impassioned way about the restaurant business. So, yes, Waiter Rant is an actual thing. And I want to put this out there right away quick. While I'm not going to be yelling like, at anybody. I want you to know that. No, but um, while I was looking stuff up about this and everything, there is actually a place called waiterrant.net that it's a web blog that you can go and put your stories up for like stuff you want to complain about, anything you want to vent about, about whatever from whatever restaurant place that you work at. And some of the stuff I read was hilarious. So it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty I actually, I follow a page on Facebook. It's like bar bar memes and like restaurant quotes and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And it's some funny stuff, man. People post some hilarious shit. It's oh, just yeah. everyday stuff too, but it's, you think about it. Well, so I know, I know that waiting is like a little bit of an older, considered older movie now. And not a lot of people that I talk to really. But uh, Ryan it. Reynolds, that's such a good one. So but I'd say funny. That, that movie to hilarious. Me really gives a good explanation of what people go through in the restaurant business, because I'm not going to lie. The restaurant business is a very stressful job just because yeah. You always have those certain people that are like, oh, I don't have to tip well, or I can be like this. That that's their job to get me these things or this, that, blah, blah. And don't I get me wrong, it that. is, but I hate people yeah, that have that attitude and make it difficult. And you know, there's ways it, to go about it. Exactly. So like, just the dealing with unpleasant people and having to still be that's the worst. Having oh, to keep face. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So Joe, when we when we all worked at Carabas, Frank, you got hired as what? I was a line cook. I started in uh, pizza and then like I did grill and saute and stuff like that. But for the most part, I was always cold side, like appetizers, pizza, salads and stuff. Yeah, okay. you did cold side. Yeah. I, bro, I used to kill at the pizza <clears throat> station. I was so a grill guy. Have, when I used to have people Fried sit at Joe. the bar there. So, you know how we had like the high top table right at the pizza station? Bro, yeah. I used to make little pies all the time and give them like sample slices and stuff like that on my like, pizza station all the time. People used to love me. They used to tip me there and stuff. It was cool. I, I actually yeah, that was a that was a cool was, spot, bro. The 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 pizza, the pizza spot. Bar? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Started- and then you had the tables like literally right there against the window. Mm-hmm. It was cool, and they would let you. Like they told us, Frank like, had a you, following. You could make a certain <laughs> amount of like uh. Frank and you know, free pies a night to give out like samples and this and that. So like when people came, like I would give them like sample, like little mini pies and stuff as like appetizers and shit. So it was cool. You know what I loved about that place? I love the open kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. You could see the, the cooks like doing their thing. Yeah. So I, I like that, man. And I was on the grill. Like when you put some of that butter and that oil on and you got the big flames, man, everybody's like, oh, <laughs> No, I hear you. I, the one thing I loved about Carabas Fun. specifically, because I hear you on that too, but I loved how... This is where we all worked, by the way, in Carabas. Yeah. That's how we all met. Um, But that's... The Joe one wasn't restaurant here three that I worked ago. at. I wasn't there for that. That was the one restaurant that was commercial anyway, that I worked at, that wasn't like a mom and pop place, that actually made everything fresh. Like we everything didn't have fresh. anything that came in, that came in like in a prepared bag that you just had to heat up and like this and that. We actually had prep cooks in the morning that made all the soups, made all the stuff, made all the sauces, all the stuff, and then had it at night fresh. And I have to say that was one thing. Oh, Carabas held its own, man. Yeah, no, they not were for they nothing. Were. <clears throat> I don't know. Now it's not as good, I don't think, but Wheezy No Peas will be forever burned into my head. Wheezy No Peas. <laughs> Joe, you weren't there for Wheezy No Peas, right? No, I wasn't there. For right. So Wheezy No Peas. But I heard. Here's the thing. So when you work in a restaurant, right, everybody. Tom would be like, 
everybody sees everybody. And a lot of the time, like, so when we worked there with Darren, Darren was a host, right? So Darren, I can't believe Darren, Darren was a host. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Darren so was a host. Darren was killing a host. I was a he waiter. Was a Frank was on cold side, and Darren would seat like a group of cute girls or whatever, or like attractive people. <laughs> of course, and he would. He'd come over to me yeah, and be like, "Yo," so uh, he, he would say, "He'd just be like Weezy No Peas, three hundred five or whatever. Three hundred five is the table number, and Weezy No Peas was a dish that wasn't on the menu. No, so, so would... a pasta Weezy was a dish, okay. but it didn't have peas in it." So the customer wouldn't realize or pick it up. But if you were like, yo, uh, uh, Weezy No Peas, all the cooks knew that what that meant and most of the servers and stuff too. So you would literally see everyone's head go up all at the same time. <laughs> Look at it's like cool. code. It's code. Yeah. It was funny oh, shit, man. It was great. I loved it, yo. We used to hang out all the time because so I, I was there as a waiter at first. And then I got into the bartending over there. But like bartending down the line is a lot better than there but we would have fucking family meal after work we'd eat up and then we'd clean yeah. up and then we'd all go outside and we would go play some fucking football or wiffle ball and that was some fun shit wiffle that was some football good times we had we like, had chalk we drew all over the fucking parking lot one night <laughs> the best was too if you were first cut you were going to Fridays and starting to drink to wait for the second and third cut people to get off so we could have a full game. So like some people would already be drinking and then other people yeah, would be getting off catching meet up. up there. <laughs> it was good, man. It's a lot of fun. Oh, great. Good times. I personally, dude, I, I've waited tables since I was 16 at a pizzeria and then 18, I got hired there and I've been waiting tables for like 15 years of my life. And it's crazy to think that. It's a because good like, hustle, man. Dude, yeah. you make so much cash, and it's like... See, the thing is, is about the restaurant business how do you not is exactly... Choose it's that. good cash, but there's no future in it. Because there is a future. There's people who no, have futures No, I in mean it. in the sense of... Oh, so Gordon Ramsay they, never had a future. Okay. No, Gordon Ramsay Yeah, is but very as far a cook, we're talking about waiters and sir. Not even that. Gordon Ramsay is very far and few between. It's hard to get to that <clears> status or whatever. There's... A million you could still make big bucks, bro. But you get the right spot. Make big bucks while you're working. But the reason there's no future in it, if you're a server or a bartender for 15, 20 years, 30 years, when you get older and you can't work anymore and you can't do those hard shifts and whatever, you're not making as much. There's no 401k. There's no. So eventually. Yeah, there's, okay, there's, grandpa. There's okay, business. grandpa. I'm just saying at some point you do have to think about that. Like I have kids. No, nah, of course. About, you know what I mean? So. If you work there, I have dogs and cats. Someone that's that shit too, bro. <laughs> but if there's someone, I mean, if um you're not someone that's putting something like that away on your own or whatever, there's yeah, not really any yeah. future in the restaurant business unless you're continuing to work. You know what I mean? There is no retirement there. So that's why, and like the nights, weekends, holidays, like for right. Family, but now think that about was it why like for this. me it like changed after a while. All like, right, I can I see the nights, weekends, holidays. For I love cooking forever, but then things just started to change and like you know, priorities change or whatever. So I didn't, I don't know. I just wasn't as happy with the restaurant business anymore, but I also wouldn't take back a lot of the things that I feel like the restaurant business instilled in me for life. Like just, Bro. Like, oh. I feel like everyone, so the, the nights get so late. Well, so yeah. late. Well, see, I don't even just mean like that. I mean, like, like how I said about dealing with unpleasant people, multitasking, like different things that, yeah, you have to have a special type of tolerance and patience, bro. Well, that's why I said I feel like everyone should have to work in the restaurant business some point in their life. Yeah, it definitely most likely in the you younger side. But yeah, I feel like it helps you a lot. You know what I mean? It helps you become like a better. I don't want to say a better a person, but you shit do. And the you get a lot of life lessons from that shit, and mm -hmm. you learn to respect people, and you're like. Patience is a fucking. Just think of all the different personalities we've had to come across mm -hmm. and help and assist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And restaurants have turnover. Being on time, learning the importance of like you know punctual stuff, punctuation, punctual stuff, whatever. Punctuality. There you go. That's the word. Yeah, and ordering and time and you know, <clears throat> like that. You learn responsibility. Yeah. You know, I, I just always felt like. Everyone should work in the restaurant business. Bro, especially my memory is and you wouldn't have wild. It's so good. Like I could go up to a table of I'm gonna say confidently eight people and remember their whole order without writing it down. Oh, so you're like the guy in waiting. And but it's not trap. like steak medium rare <laughs> fillet tuna. It's like detailed, yeah, yeah, and modified shit that people order off the menu. I'm like, all right, got it, got it, got it, got it. 
sometimes I get so overwhelmed with it though that I it just it's like a photographic memory and then I do whatever I have to do such as like excuse me get the drinks or go do this or go greet another table and take these menus or go whatever and then I'll go back to the computer and I'll do the same exact thing all over like it's just I'm reading off of a picture it's crazy I don't know my mind has definitely expanded since working in um restaurants because it helps a lot today no i agree that's what i said i i, I do should I be very afford- efficient tolerance and patience like you said before mm-hmm. joe you were a server too right yeah i did serving frank did you ever serve not, not even at just carabas. at carabas but i should say not at carabas i have at other places so like i started as a dishwasher worked up as a line cook went to a sous chef then i served and i've actually bartended too um, but those were both like, Ooh, big boy. I could cranberries all day. <laughs> oh, well, those were actually like shorter. Like they, I didn't do that for very, very long, but even like bartending, I did it for like a little over a year and it was at a golf uh, country club. I remember that Long Island. Yeah. So it wasn't like, Dude, you know I what I mean? I fucking love bartending. It was Joe, fun. I'm not going to lie. He never got fun. into the bartending, man. Oh, Joe, I can't make a drink for my life. I can make actually, if I have like 20 fucking random things in front of me, I'll whip up a drink, but like, no, I am not honest, good with drinks. It wasn't really that hard, especially if, like, once you make them, you know, a few times, you just start to remember, just like cooking with anything else or, you know. Yeah. But at bars, for the most part, you don't really get a lot of weird drinks unless, like, you get the girl that orders a Cosmo or, like, something different or an apple martini or whatever. Mm-hmm. For the most part, it's, like, people getting beers or something on the rocks or, you know what I mean? So, this right. club soda or whatever. What are you like, saying? You're saying people just People go to as... a bar, like, oh, let me get a vodka cranberry or let me get a gin and tonic. You know what I mean? Like, or a beer. To me, it's- They kind of keep it simple, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I That's why for me, like, I'd rather bartend at a lounge of some sort. Like, I bartended oh, at three tiki get lounges. Those crazy drinks, yeah. Not tiki in Jersey. Tiki just, but like tiki lounges where it's outdoors, there's a bigger bar. You do get more people ordering- more cocktails than you do just beers well, and yeah, shots there, you know certain bars obviously like the what's it called mixology and stuff so don't get me wrong there is certain bars where yes you would get more drinks like that and stuff but for me the most part i don't know i always felt like a bartender it's, it's basic drinks well I, I thought the fun part about bartending or at least for the place that i worked at was there was one time where i hosted i had them i got them to play a ufc fight and we actually got a lot of people and that was just fun, like just having the crowd behind the bar and like. Yeah, it's just, a good time. It, it's just it is. It's a fun time. Joe, that was never your thing. No, nah, never. I've never did a night behind the bar. What? Ne- what about bar backing? Yeah, I did bar backing. Okay. I did bar backing in some cool fucking places. Bar backing. Bar backing. But I never did the bartending, bro. I never ever made a drink and had to serve it. I've gotten people beers and shit, but like, never had the full experience of doing bartending. <laughs> I'm just I don't kidding. know. For some reason, I can't deal with that shit, dude. That's too much. I love it, bro. That anticipation. Oh. You get to control the people's night for the most part. You I know? guess. You're interacting yeah, technically. Them. You're like, hey, how you doing? You're very high energy, mm. lively and shit. You're making the fucking cocktails and they're loving it because you're just like pouring <laughs> it from one to another cup. And they're like, ooh, look but at look that. At, look at the two personalities you're talking about. Like, you're very talkative and Joe's a man of few words. No, nah, so, like, so a man. Like, no, like le- let like me like tell you, bro. You would want to be like, hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? He'd be He's like, like, what do you want? Oh, bro, bro. No, we don't have- you. All right, you're getting high again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like. <laughs> yeah, man, to the point. What do you want? Yeah. Like- <laughs> so, Joe, when you go out, you just want a beer, right? I've never, I don't think I've ever yeah, seen you order a mixed drink. Yeah, no, I don't do guy. mixed drinks, man. Frank, what do you get besides Heineken and Heineken's and Blue Moon? Heineken pine trees. I've changed a lot over the years. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to always drink Tangeray. Uh, oh, I've take always a liked gin. gin. I've always liked gin. But now, now I love Bombay Sapphire. Oh, uh, that's my. Favorite. But yo, Season. there was a stage two for a while when Karen worked in Glen Cove at this bar. I used to go there all the time and get uh, a Bud Light and Soco on the rocks. That's not nice. I with you? No. All right. What? <laughs> I was in Manhattan one night. I don't know if it was, I would think I was with you and Darren and we got, we snuck into that club and we wound up, I, I Who, stole me? a bottle of SoCo. Oh, SoCo, bro. We were a fat yeah. cat or That's something like that. Okay. I was like, which one you we about? went down to the bathroom, dude. And it was the downstairs bar was closed and there was just a whole bar right next to this fucking bathroom. I was like, and yeah, we seen all the bottles, and Danny just fucking hops over behind the bar. It was like dark as shit down there. 
takes a whole bottle of SoCo, stuffs Yo, it Joe, in his Joe. pants. Wait, you're incriminating no. me right now. It's okay. This is why you're my boy. No, Danny <laughs> did this. This is why you're my boy. I've, I've done the same thing. Me and my buddy Mango, when we went to Medieval Times for his birthday once, we were waiting. This is the- last year. What do you mean once? <laughs> what? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I don't know. So I'm, this was a couple years back. but Two so, years back. Who, wait, this sto- my story? I don't know, dude. Whatever. I'm just fucking no, this you. was a while ago. This was before I lived in Staten Island. Um, So it had to be at least three or four years ago. I didn't have Mia. So it was like four years ago. But we I went to it. Medieval Times. And while we were waiting, like underneath the like bridge thing in between the two bars to go in and they were, for them to open the gates, I was like looking at the security guys. And on the speed rack, on like the lower rack where they have like the closed bottles that weren't open yet, I stole a whole bottle of Grey Goose and did the same thing, put it right in my arms. And when we went and sat down, and poured it in everybody's drinks that was all we were all with. It was pretty dope. Frank's so funny. Like table service over here. He's bringing no, bottles funny, to the table. That's what he was just saying you did. And I'm like, that's, that's why we're always, bro. Ugh. Yo, all right. If you- Speaking of table service, have you guys? Yeah, we we've had a couple of tables before. All right, would you be okay if your girlfriend was a bottle service girl? No, no. We had this conversation. Well, this ain't fucking family. wearing no skimpy outfit. And it's different. Bottles. It's, bottles. it's right, so different. That, this is what I'm asking you. It's, it's like, hold the like, fuck on. It's different from being a bottle service girl to working at a restaurant to working at like a Hooters to being a bartender to doing only fans like Bottle there's that's a ske- that's a spectrum thing. it's just different bro people. basically what? i'm Bottle not cool and one thing my the girl on, i can't hear you guys different pay grades what's different pay grades I said bottle service and working at Hooters is the same thing it's just different pay grades okay and then Joe what do you say what does that have to do with anything yeah i mean no, because you're saying you were saying like they were different things. That bottle service and Hooters is the same thing. They were the space, no, the same type of outfit, bottle service, same... just bringing out bottles to the table and being you're flirting with them, you're hanging out. If you're going to a Hooters, you're going there to get a waitress. She's gonna be bringing you ranch dressing. <laughs> no bottle service lady is bringing you ranch dressing. Okay, all right. Do you get what I'm saying? No, but okay. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I'm just thinking you're wrong because I feel like Hooters, they do the same I'm exact wrong? thing. wrong? Yeah. Who are you to say who's right and who's wrong? I'm, I'm not saying you I'm are or not. I'm, in my four opinion weeks, is that you're bro. Wrong. I'm kicking your ass. So wait, anyway, Danny, back to our conversation. <laughs> Look how I'm saying. Would you be okay with your girlfriend doing bottle service? Of course he would. If yeah, I, he would. He loves it. Danny Danny flaunts his girlfriend. If he doesn't have a girlfriend, he can't yeah, flaunt I was just and be say, like, he, he was cool I got the baddest a bitch. That had only fans, or that was a pro, uh, he was kind of dated. Uh, Reed, remember it? Yeah. Oh, so, that, uh, when we were talking about, we talked about this before. So I said we had this conversation, and me and Joe were basically like, nah, because you wouldn't want other people to see. Like, that's what I'm saying. At Hooters, they wear like skimpy clothes. Bottle service, same thing. They're both flirting with when they deliver their stuff. They, that's the gimmick at those places. I wouldn't want my girl to do those yeah, things every day on a flirt. daily thing. What about so, when? Okay. You know what I mean? To yeah. me, and that's what I'm saying. When we talked about this last time, me and Joe stood on that, and you were like, really? No, but it's just this, and it's just. What about you had a daughter and she decided to work? <laughs> you, <laughs> would you I'll let fuck you up? I can't would wait you to let fuck you Frank, up. would you though? No, I would <laughs> fucking disown her. I'd beat her ass. She wouldn't be you able to live disown in my house. her. Yes. Wow. First of all, I would gladly take my goddaughter and niece in from their hatred of the father because she's trying to work. For a living, no, I would obviously my get daughters would never job. have to do that as an option. So if they job. did that, it would be only because they wanted to. And if they wanted to do something like that, to be like, mm, like that would do, no, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm, I would, okay. I would hope that okay. I teach my daughters respect for themselves to where they don't want to do that. And they're never going to have to struggle hard enough to where they would have to have those jobs to make that money. I didn't say stripper, so no. dude. You're making this to sound really bad. Like, what if no, she I still think those jobs are still not. I don't want to say not respectful, but like not. Uh, like Yo, when they could be doing Frank doesn't respect things. what your girlfriend does for a living. <laughs> Get, what are you talking Bro, about? Bro, the day Frank told me he will not hold the door for somebody, I knew this guy has no I respect never for anything. Said that. No. I just so said I'm not surprised. Bad if someone didn't do it for me. I do hold the door open for people all the yeah. time. I That's just don't get mad saying. if someone doesn't do it for me. That was my point there. Shit. I never said that. <sighs> So, all right, what? let's, I, I don't know. I, I, Why, I, Danny? Yeah, yeah, oh, let's, what, what? He wants, he Where, wants which way do you want to go, bro? He wants to do no, his, I, I want to talk about this. No, no, I didn't want to, uh, 
You didn't answer the question about your daughter's working in a restaurant. So no, I, I said I, I. Oh, in in restaurants, yes, that's okay. But no, if you were talking about like bottle service and Hooters and this that restaurants, I would love for my kids to work in restaurants. Like I said, I think everyone. Yeah, but Frank, you know what happens in restaurants, values. right? We know what happens in restaurants. We're about to get into what happens at restaurants. Just saying Think about this. Yeah, but not always. Like, you know what? Not always. Even. It okay, was all look, days. We all worked in a restaurant. We know the work relationships and who's yes, sleeping with who. It doesn't always have to be this. something bad because that's what I'm saying. Oh, it's not always bad. No, no, bro. It's I like it's like, girl, it's, it's like it's like meeting a girl. It's like it's like meeting a girl in high school, bro. It's gonna happen. That's like, it. Yeah, exactly. In high school. It's the same meeting a guy in high school. And hopefully, her working in a restaurant is gonna be her after high school anyway. So exactly, it's gonna that that type of stuff is gonna. Well, no, think about it, dude. We I was in high school, maybe like second. But that's what I'm saying. Again, I only worked when I was 15 because my mom passed away and I had to go to work. I didn't gotcha. even, even before she. So if you didn't away, have to be a stripper, a little you wouldn't be like a stripper, money. is what you're saying. But I'm saying even before she passed away, I was working a little bit to make my own money. But then it turned into On me the having to go to work because of whatever happened. So to me, I, they're never gonna have to do that. Yes, I would love for them to get a job to learn core well, values. Think about it. Money, also, there you go. Responsibility and stuff like that. But they're not gonna have to go to work 40 hours a week they could work however much they want to make time dick whatever it is yeah i for me it wasn't like that so that's why I'm, i would never want them to have to feel that so yeah that's why i said when you were saying like oh bottle service that would bother you yeah i would hope no, i, I mean, would never feel like she would want to have to get a job like that do i want her to work in a restaurant business though and learn a lot of like things about life and how people are absolutely 100 percent. so you think you would you wouldn't mind any of your kids working in a restaurant? No, not they at all. They fucking get paid WAP in Europe. Like, there's we'll a, a steady fucking salary. job, bro. Go serve and they, people. I don't, I would fucking, they, there you go. You mentioned before, like, you can't be a professional waiter, but in Europe, they have a lot of people who do that for like longevity. They have 401k, they have medical, they have shit like that. That's in Europe. Some places, some places are really big, man. Shout out to Europe too, because we got a lot of listeners in Europe. Shout out to Europe. <laughs> I was actually looking at that on the analytics, but um, no, I, I mean, yeah, that's great for out there, but we don't have that here. You know what I mean? So I was talking about for here for us. So do you? You know what? I do think that it also teaches you a lot about respect and like personal communication. Like it's it's a big deal to me if we go out to a restaurant. And there's like nine of us, right? And some one out of the nine is a dick to the waiter. The other eight that we've all been out with are probably going to be like, yo, why are you such a dick to that waiter, right? I would think or so. Or I'd probably just tell the waiter, yo, you could tell the cooks to fuck with his food. It's cool. Right. <laughs> oh, all right, so have you ever yes. fucked with someone's food? Yes, many times. Oh, you're such a scumbag. No, I'm not. People are scumbags. Joe, have you ever fucked with someone's food? Mm, not really. As far as I would go is like, if someone was being fucking dumb, I would undercook their meat you know what i mean like just make their experience worse <laughs> okay i i had a guy i'll Stop tell you that this is stupid was like that too. you know what i mean this was carabas um i had a guy that i forgot what happened but he what was, was his name such a dick no it was a customer i don't know his name but it was a customer that he was such a dick I got the same steak returned back like three times it was a night you were where cooking I it or you were yeah i was on the grill Oh, so um, you sucked at your job is what you're saying. No, he sent it back like three <laughs> times, kept saying like wrong time, wrong time, whatever. And one of the last, like the last time that I got it back, I threw that shit on the floor, literally rolled it around, put it right back up on the grill and then gave it to him. Swear to God. Oh, you're a fucking terrible Bro. person. I am not a terrible That's person. Because I no, I'm not, not saying it in a bad way. way. I can give you a lot worse. <laughs> like you're a terrible that. person. No I, offense. <laughs> I, I can give you a lot worse stories than that. That I haven't done, but that I've seen. Seen. You want to hear okay. my worst? I'll give you my worst restaurant. Well, let's fucking hear it, dude. I want to hear it. Hear. When I was Don't working give at Wendy's, any names, I lived though. in Vegas. Okay, Vegas. I can, I can give names because he want. wouldn't care anyway. Who cares, bro? Name drop all he night would laugh long. If I told this. So my, one of my buddies, Me? Josh, Johnny Hopkins. <laughs> one of my buddies, Josh, back in the day. I know um, Josh from Vegas. Yeah, you met Josh before. So him. People know. <laughs> Every one of my friends worked at Wendy's at like this one small time for like a couple months. And there was this dude that was like a regular, it was like this old guy that used to come and he was, he was, he was a miserable old man, but he would come at night and he always got a frosty with his stuff. So one night my buddy Josh was like cleaning out the frosty machine and filled it back up. With what? Peed in the frosty machine. Oh no. Oh dude. Took a piss in the frosty machine. 
And this guy came like a day later or the next night or whatever, and they served him a piss frosty. What about everybody else that ordered frosties, bro? They got him too. Oh, that's so fucked up. Oh, think how many people actually order frosties from Wendy's. A lot of people in Vegas. I I was not a part of this, but like I said, they were my friends, three friends that also worked there with me. And they told me about this one day when, like, we were. I can't eat frosties. Did they tell you this after they gave you a frosty? No, but. Yeah, that was that was probably one of the worst things that I've ever heard in the restaurant business from people that I worked with that I was just like. All right. So let me ask you, what's considered a restaurant? Is it like table dining, sit down bar or is it like a Wendy's or a Burger King? People they say, say that that's restaurants that's not, as restaurant. But to yeah, me, but we're not, talking about like dining. Like you got to go sit down yeah, dining. table service. Yeah, dude, that's one thing I can't stand. Like if you go out to eat and well, I don't know why I said this one thing you can't stand. I was thinking in my head. When people come out to eat because they don't want to cook or clean, and that's fine, I understand, and they come out and they're just miserable, or they just like X for a million and one things that they don't even use, and it just gets on your fucking nerves. I'm like, yo, dude, X me everything at one time. I don't want to go here, get this, get that. They think they're at a fucking white table restaurant. Like, come on, man. I got got other tables and shit. Because you didn't answer. It's my job. I get it. But like, it's an insistent, constant irritation. You didn't answer this one. And because, like, obviously you're pointing out that people have ticked you off as customers. Have you ever messed with someone's drink or someone's anything? It's like, be honest. Come on. Just, you don't have to name yeah, a person. Of, co- or whatever. of course he did. Yeah. He, when have we gave him the answer, drink? he was like, oh, you really haven't? Have you ever spent someone's drink before? No, man. I don't like doing that shit. Come on. Be honest. So what, bro? That that smirk says you did some terrible shit. someone's drink before. Nope. Like someone's cop, what'd you do? No, I don't honestly, dude. I never really remember doing it. Come like on, that. I just told you I threw a guy's steak on the floor. Danny definitely dipped his balls in someone's <laughs> fucking drink. And it was it was wonton soup, and I was working at this. <laughs> no, 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 man. Really, nothing. I don't fuck around like that because he's a liar, people. He just doesn't want to tell anybody know, the dude. truth. I'm he's not answering your questions himself. anymore, dude. Yeah, no. for real. I'm not, I'm not participating. Look, there's been you, times dude. where I've had to somebody wants something wrapped up to go and it like fell on where I'm fucking wrapping it up. I would just scoop it back in, but I mean, it's not like falling on the floor. I'm not putting, I'm not sprinkling pubes in someone's <laughs> fucking mashed potatoes, you know, like I know what you want you me to really say. Committed to their job. Garlic salt. <laughs> <laughs> like I know no, what you I, want I the answer to be, but no, I've never really fucked with that. There's been times where I gave someone a dirty coffee mug. Could okay, be I see, accident, that's what I mean. That whatever, counts but, though. That counts. So that, all right. Yeah, that counts. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, you will. Know. You knew. You knowingly. That's the word I was looking for. No. Why am I so off on my vocabulary? I don't know, man. And the guy's <laughs> responsible for Frankopedia can't even read good. <laughs> I never learned how to read. <laughs> no, but uh... so why do you think that? All right. Why do you think that people should? This is what I'm trying to get at. I'm sorry. So I feel that by being treated like shit sometimes when you're the waiter, being told this, that, whatever. You get this sense of like, oh, I wish the shoe was on the other foot. Mm-hmm. And I do feel that you get that type of understanding of what this person is going through and what that person is going through. So you show them a mutual respect when you're the one sitting down out to eat and dinner, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that is something, I, bro, I've always said this. I think people, everybody should have no choice but to work in the restaurant to get an understanding of life lessons and work in retail to see how much of a bitch or a prick someone can really be. Yeah, retail too. Dude, people that unfold shirts that sucks. I had two retail jobs. It's not even like, that. I the people, hated that shit. You're so rude for no reason. No, people I know, but I'm rude. saying like people just don't care. They just look at something and just throw it back down. Like they just yeah. Well, care. it's not really. Oh, I hated that shit. But no, uh, what I was gonna say is exactly like how you what you just said. Um. Oh my god! Shoot. Oh dang it! <laughs> you said I lost shoot. it. I lost Dude. it. Oh, Joe, what is one of your most fondest memories of working in a restaurant? Or what is something that you hated in a restaurant? Frank, we'll get back to you when you think about it. No, nah, it's I lost. I don't it. know, man. Something that I hated. Yeah. Uh, on on the on the cooking side or the waiting okay, side? Okay, so let me ask you, what do you because I have you both. Prefer? What do you prefer? Cooking or waiting? I prefer waiting. Okay. Yeah. Waiting is always more opportunity to make more money. Cooking, yeah. I was always on one rate pay, and sometimes you break your fucking ass. I was just gonna say, it's hot in the money, kitchen, it's man. It's difficult. On a busy get night. Baby. Get out the kitchen. No, for real. Wait, he's right though. Waiters don't have to do as much physical like work. No, body stop. Tired at the end of the night, but 
mentally you know, you we're exhausted. paid a lot more. Yes, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I that agree too. with that. But I feel like as a cook, there was so many nights where I was just done. Like, just my body was just tired. But then as a waiter, like, I don't know. Like, exactly like you said, at the end of a waiting shift, you're just like, oh, I need to decompress. Like, you know what I mean? It's more mental. And then we go out then. for a drink, everybody. <laughs> Line cook, host, waitress, bartender. You know what I hated when I was waiting? Like, after a table's done, they would sit there for, like, oh. a fucking hour and like you only have the three or four tables in your section, you know what I mean? And like people think it's cool to just fucking hang out there for their whole entire day and just bullshit. I hated that what so sucks much. Even more, is and then you get like a fucking five dollar tip after, mm-hmm. like you know what I mean? I was gonna and say, it's like you did everything you fucking could. Oh, it's the worst when you off. drop the check and they like you said they don't oh. leave. And then you're still like, can I do this for you? Can you do this? Like, no, we didn't get to it yet. I'm like, well, I'm kind of fucking hinting that you got to get the fuck up. Yeah. I remember what I was going to say before. So right. when you said, uh, cause why people like, basically what I was going to say is the thing we weren't in the middle of something or anything. <laughs> the people that I messed with food and stuff like that were the people that I felt like exactly that deserved it because exactly if they came in, they were so rude or uh, inconsiderate or just, difficult to have to deal with and so it was someone that like how you said was somebody or even i said before how somebody needs to work in the restaurant business to learn that self-respect for other people this was someone that never learned those things and was just such a total jerk to people because they looked down on them for working in the restaurant business or something like that so i just want to make sure i said that because i don't want people to think like oh i just mess with anyone's food like frank just needed to make sure that like you know what I mean? They they just some people do deserve that. I, I don't know. I, I, that's my opinion. I feel you. It goes. It's a circle. It goes on forever. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Joe, what the fuck were you saying? I asked you before. What was your favorite part of waiting? I don't know. Frank made me forget. Way to go, Frank. Way to go, a hole. No, I, t- um, I was telling you what I hated most. Yeah. Right. Oh, we hate most. I told you already. No, I you, I said, what do you prefer? You said waiting over a cook. And I said, why? And yeah. you still... Oh, but then you turned it around and said, well, what's the worst thing you hate about one of them? I guess either you way. You want to know what my favorite thing was? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I liked cooking. Because, like, I don't know, man. It feels good <laughs> when you fucking... When you bang out, you know, like 30 dishes in 12 minutes... And everybody's extremely happy with their food. It's like, yeah, I cooked that shit. You know what I mean? It's a good feeling. A rail of tickets is awesome. Like people go out to eat and they want good food. You're controlling what they're eating. Like I'm making that, you know. Not even that. Like especially like in Carabas when you had the grill guy, the plate guy, the saute guy, everybody putting stuff for one dish and stuff. It's like a, a, a full machine, like a whole, you know, like assembly line. Yeah, working it work. The, the way together, kitchen works yeah. too is once it when it's working, it's really satisfying. Exactly, it's, it's such a well-oiled machine when it's good and everybody's doing their part. And like it, it's just it's fun. Uh, like he said, I I love killing a whole rail of tickets. I I, I miss that. It's awesome. Yeah, yo, I, I I worked, man. When I first started cooking, I worked at a baseball stadium in Lakewood, Blue Claws. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, bro, it was fucking cool, man. I started off with like my own little cart, and I would go up to the party decks, and I would have my little hot plates and make like hot dishes and shit. And then cool. I was working in the executive booth, so I was like a personal chef, and I would do whatever they wanted right there. You know what I mean? In like the executive booths, like. And dude, it was cool because after I was done, I got to like watch the game for a good hour. That's you know, crazy. and yeah, yeah that was that was a like cool after, job, man. They don't yeah after a certain after time half or the seventh yeah. inning trash or whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like I would clean my shit up before I go down. I would hang out, dude. I made friends with so many of the people that were running the parties and shit. I would hang out. They would invite me to have a drink, this and that. It, it was it was definitely one of my favorite jobs when it came to the cooking. Thing that I never got to like I. Ne- like I worked at the catering hall and did like the weddings and stuff, but like I never worked anywhere cool where I got to like meet anyone famous or had some cool event or like it was always just Ooh, basic. I like, have his bar like, as a bar back. Jobs or bartending jobs though. I no? met so many famous people bar backing. Really? Yeah. I was in when I was living in Florida. I bar backed at. Uh, gonna bring that up. Yeah, the Blue Martini. Blue Martini. Oh my god, dude! Oh. 
Sounds like a cool place. Yeah, it was so much fun, dude. Oh, I met like the whole Tampa Bay Bucks. That's I met, cool. dude. Our, people from the uh, Orlando Magic. I met like the the owner of Publix, which is like a big supermarket chain out there. That's Fucking cool. Chris Angel came through there. Tiger Woods has come That's through cool. there. Yeah. Chris Angel. A lot, cool. a, a lot of big show. people. Like people from the Knicks. A lot of basketball players came through there. Models. When he first came out in like what oh three oh four whatever, I used to love Chris Angel's that show. Dude, Mind yeah, Break. he used to be so big. Such a dope show. Uh, my sister used to work as a server. Shit's in corny Planet as Hollywood. hell now, though. Yeah, uh, my sister used to work as a server in Planet Hollywood, the restaurant that was in I forget which casino, but before the Planet Hollywood was a casino out there, it was a restaurant, and it was like where all the statues and whatever, kind of like Hard Rock and stuff. But it was yeah. like movie statues, like Terminator was there and this that whatever. So. She met a lot of famous people at that restaurant, and oh, I was that's always cool. jealous. I was always jealous of that. But uh, and then my mom and my uncle worked in Caesar's Palace, and they met a few famous people too. But I've never personally. Um, no. mm-hmm. how about you? Do you ever met any famous cool people or like any like awesome events that you got to work at that were like cool like that? Um, I'm actually no. But I was gonna really? say I've all met, the bartending you do, you've never really? actually no, ran I've into met, <laughs> I met somebody like a celebrity, but not when I was at a bar. No. Hmm. I met James Gandolfini. That's cool. When Did he you? That is yeah. cool. I was in college and uh he I think I'm pretty sure they just he was oh, finished with Sopranos or something and he came in to do like film and video question and answer. And I like snuck in. I was like, holy shit, I know that voice. So it wasn't while you were serving. No, I've never met anybody famous while I was but then serving. it don't count, bro. Yeah, that it's don't count. while you That's were working. Jeez, what a waste of a good story. Yeah, man. for real. Wrong subject, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, maybe we could talk about school one time right. and I could bring that up then. <laughs> so how about this? Who's someone? <laughs> Summer. Summer. And you can't use one of us because, Joe, I know you're probably going to say Danny. Wait, what was the question? I wasn't even listening. I didn't say it yet. Yeah. So who is someone that when you were working in the restaurant business that you just had like a connection uh, that kind of like... A bond. Yeah. That James like Bond. Continued on forever or like lasted for so long that like st- still memorable to you. Literally nobody, bro. Danny and you were probably the, and Darren are the only people I still talk to in the restaurant business really? ever. Yeah, dude, I don't talk to anybody I used to Yo, work with. Any, any restaurant job, none. Mm. I got as Joe as like, working at Grand Plaza with me one time. Me and Joe. Oh go. my god! Oh, dude, tell the catering story. Hall. Tell the hall. story. Oh, right. <laughs> so, like, I forgot what was going we on. We did catering together. What losers! I think we were like in a team meeting or something before our shift or some shit, and it was like. The maitre d was explaining something and it was a little complex, but like you and there was a lot of us, it was like 12 of us sitting at this huge round table. Okay. (laughs) And like I forgot what it was, man. Something to do with the glass where it's like if you had to think a little bit harder about it, it wouldn't sound it wouldn't seem to whatever the case is. Joe asks is a question (laughs) that was like pretty common like nobody else asked it because it might have thought it sounded stupid or right but everybody was like waiting for an answer it was like all right good question okay and this what guy, the guy got pissed off at him no the guy like pauses for like a solid <laughs> five seconds like joe x is the question and it's like <laughs> he just like stared at me pause yeah yeah <laughs> And like everybody looked at each other, like was it supposed to, like that? I don't know, bro. It was so like, fucking funny. Did I say something wrong or like it was, it was the most fucking awkward? It was just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess like, that's the answer. So, then. That's my answer. Yeah, an exaggerated yeah. I don't know why, but that sticks out with me forever. Oh, bro, that's I'll never shit. forget that. That was so funny. We did a so lot. D, of how about stuff. you though? Someone that was like memorable, like that still to this day, like in the restaurant business. You You don't have to still talk to them. He just told you what it was. Huh? That was you. I said it can't be one of the three of us. Yeah, but that stuck out to him. I know what I'm saying. Give me one. It's not with one of the three of us. Something that was. Oh, like a moment like that. Yeah, something that was like exactly like that, but not from one of the three of us. Like who was someone like because I could tell you. Go ahead. I mean, Curtis is someone that I'll just, he was always 
he was like the godfather to me. He, everybody went to him for advice. He was just like the oldest one out of all of us. But like he, I, I, he's just someone that always will stick to me. No, Kurt, matter, and I still up, talk Kurt? to. Him. Yeah, Lloyd Clinton. I'm sorry, is his real name, but Lloyd Christmas, one of our buddies. He used to really, really. He still does a little bit, but he used to really, really look like Jim Carrey. Like it looks Lloyd like Lloyd Cl- Christmas in Dumb and Dumber. The April Fool's joke on Lloyd will always forever like that. Yo, one to me was funny. just. It was the best thing. So, That's bro, this fun kid, thing like pranking prank people so and much. shit. We we got him to empty out the hot water, like the red spigot thing. We got him to get a uh, garbage pail. Or well, explain that the red spigot thing just okay. goes to the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, there's the red, not for people that don't know the red down. spigot thing. Yeah, yeah, has water like automatically it's hooked up to the back of it. Flow. So we it's told like him that you had to empty it at the end of the night. So he was holding the spigot and filled up like five buckets before he realized that it was just never ending. We got him to go look for a can of elbow grease in the back. We got him to get a trash bag and try and catch the air in the walk-in and change the air in the walk-in. Bro, we got him so many times. So he was just kind of tired of us pranking him. And we were like, all right, let's get him like one more time. Like we'll get one good one before like we kind of like let it go. So on April Fool's, mm-hmm. we got two of the managers in on it, Vicky and Wes. Wes was the kitchen manager. Vicky was the front of the house manager at the time. We got them in on it to when he walked in for work that day to sit him down in the booth and tell him that he was fired. So, bro, no, I am not even joking. Good. I felt bad because he was on the verge of tears. Like, what do you mean? Why? Like this, like eighteen-year-old, nineteen-year-old kid. He fucking worked well, hard. hard. Tell hard. him what happened. Why did they mess with him? What do you mean? What was the reason that they were gonna fire him for? Oh, so they told him that so you're living out a pretty detailed piece of the story. <laughs> They told him that because he worked appetizers in the fry station, whatever. So they told him that when he had like cleaned out the fryer the night before or something like that, that he left it on or he left the drain open or whatever it was. And like it was like a big mess and like that they had to clean it up and blah, blah, blah. And they were just like, Lloyd, you know, you've just been messing up too much lately and we just, we just can't take it anymore. Like you're going to be let go. And dude, he did. He like, he didn't cry, but like he was close. Like he was broke down, like just sure, so yeah. upset. And then Vicky couldn't do it anymore. She's like, I can't, I can't. April Fool's, Lloyd, April Fool's. And he was like, fuck you guys. He was so mad. But dude, that was probably the best. That was probably the best prank I've ever seen because we had managers in on it. Like, it was great. It was awesome. So that was your memorable moment? Uh, That was just something that always stuck out to me that I'll never forget. And it was just hilarious. That's good. That's fun times. I like that shit. Pranks are a big part of working in a restaurant. They get a lot of, they pass the time a lot. Passes time. All right. So when we worked in Caraba specifically, I think I was like maybe 19 or 20. I think I started when I was 18. I did. I started when I was 18. And the fun you get when you're that like young, where you're on, where you're, you're still teetering that like, I could drink legally thing, but I'm not really allowed to yet. So we would go to bars. We'd have a great time. We'd go to people's backyard and house parties. A lot of fun. The work relationship, I'm sorry, the work environment brings everybody together. So whether you are just hanging out on Fridays across the street, outside in the parking lot, playing football, wiffle ball, whatever the case is, at someone's house in a backyard, it's a lot of fun. Amanda, I have I had keg parties. Amanda came through. There was Liz, little Lindsay. Fucking, I could go on for, for days with the names. I'm not going to bother, but like, th- then there was a whole nother Diana Carlotti, Gen B type of fucking people that came there with Vinny and a whole bunch of other people. Mike. Yeah, bro. Holy shit. You guys know who I'm talking about, but it's like, it builds such a bond with people that, I, like, even though we don't still talk frequently with all of these people, at I keep time, in touch. I keep in touch. If, even if at that time, like, it was a lot of closeness exactly like yeah see, every restaurant i ever worked at even if it wasn't like that restaurant specifically a lot of us became close friends outside of work and inside of work and we always talked all the time and i still have a lot of friends that i still talk to from that restaurant specifically more than any other job but every restaurant specifically while you were at work and on shift it was always like that raw type of joking bullshitting back and forth one-liners this and that like it's always that type of relationship to me and that's why i always loved working in restaurants um but yeah not every restaurant i feel like always is that take home friendship maybe just right, you're right. on shift at certain places but yes every place when you're on shift or you're at work no matter what always has that type of friendships and i, I do i loved it that comedy that goes on between the jokes mm-hmm. and shit all day yeah, the inside jokes and oh, hilarious the inside jokes the flirting you call you 
I just fucking, it was a lot of fun, man. It's a good time. I, I found something before that I wanted to tell you guys about. It's uh, just a list of a bunch of things of why, reasons why it sucks to work in the, in the industry, right? This is why I asked you before, what do you hate about it? And things like that. I want to run through a couple of them because they got, they, they make valid points here, right? One of them is that you'll get scheduled for an eight hour shift or a six hour shift and it'll turn into like a nine, 10, 11 or a 12 hour. You're shift. doing a fucking double. It's a whole fucking day because if you work the lunch shift and someone calls out, they need you to stay. They could actually, you could always go home of course, but like these are long days. Money. Right. Especially and if you, you stand at night, that's where the more money is so rather than the day shift. So you could wind up closing to give you a meal. You get to eat. Everybody else does the side work. They clean up and then you get extra. See, you get money. That's what you it just is. reminded me too. That was probably one. I of used to love that days. actually, bro. When I'm waiting and they're Frank, like, hey, you want to work the night shift? Sorry, Frank. Cut you right. off. <laughs> it's all right. No, but he's right because he's making the point for the front of the house. But I was going to say yeah. for the back of the house because he's saying that. But cooks, that was one of the benefits of always being a cook. Every shift, you always got a free meal, no matter what. If I worked a regular eight-hour shift, I got free one. meal, dude. As a cook, I ate anytime oh, yeah. I wanted, literally yeah, yeah, yeah. anytime I, I wanted. It. No, you but that's all what I'm saying. And not even that, but I'm saying you do get it. Don't care. So as servers, they really don't. So that was probably one of the perks too of being a cook, because even when I was younger, like I said, I started when I was 15, 16, and after my mom passed, like I knew that I was never gonna go hungry being a cook. You know what I mean? That was definitely one of the biggest things. That, and it, bro, it teaches you life lessons on that shit. How to cook, how to prepare shit. Even just being a waiter or like at the ex, at the expo, just watching the cooks do what they do. That's how I learned how to cook. I make a mean chicken parmesan. So speaking of food and stuff like that, another thing that was on this list is that you never really get to take a break and you can never sit down and eat. You either got to be standing what, you get a fucking 15, 20 minute break. Bro, that's right. the biggest thing that I, I hate it about people chat. now in general that like you hear about people that complain about like Amazon is now like, things all over the internet and stuff. They're like, Oh, but it was so crazy. You don't get any breaks. And I'm just like, what? I worked the restaurant business my whole yeah, life. I never got a break. Like, what are you talking about? When I would get a meal and eat when I was a cook, I would go in the back and just scarf for like down. five seconds and then yeah, run back out. I never sat down and enjoyed my meal. No what the way. hell was that? <laughs> yeah, you always had like a, a good 10 minutes of downtime. Yeah. Fucking run in the back and eat the piece of chicken you had cooking on the grill. Bro, I'm not not even. My There's been I made this an hour ago. It's cold now. I'm going to go scarf it down really quick Bro. and inhale it. And I'll be right back before the next ticket comes in. Okay. <laughs> You eat half of it, go back out, continue doing it, come back in a few minutes later, finish the half. 90% of the drinks. servers that we used to make food for that would eat it like two hours later when all their tables finally left and they were like rolling yeah. silverware eating that cold ass plate. <laughs> so there's that. And there was like a lot of uh, another thing it says is you run out of supplies a lot. So for instance, there's there's a shortage of steak knives for the front of the house. Or when you run out of like lime juice or fucking anything that you were supposed to prep for your job, like specifically line cook, Joe, for like, did you have to prep anything in the morning or you just came in and cooked? Yeah, no. When we came in, we had to go into the fridge and take out our steaks, take out the chicken. We got to, you know, <clears throat> running out of some shit that you prep for. for the right. We got all our backups ready and shit, you know, you know? That you had to sucks, come in and prep. Man. Running out of it. Real quick, pause that. So there was one time, this was actually a Carabas moment too, and it was probably best save that i ever had in a restaurant uh the sonyo cake the chocolate cake that we used to have the sonyo i had no more sonyo in my dessert drawer it's a dessert it's a chocolate dessert with like delicious whipped cream on it nobody's gonna notice so another by the way we used to make all those in-house the prep cooks used to make those desserts in the morning but anyway so i used to i went to go get a half pan out of the back walk-in to put in my drawer because i had no more backups and whatever I'm coming out the door from the back of the kitchen to like behind the line and I'm passing the appetizer station going around Lloyd slip on like a thing of water. And literally as I'm slipping and going down, I just perfectly, my palm just went right up against the edge of the counter and the half tray just slid right onto the counter. And I busted my ass, got water all over me and like this, and that, whatever, but the cake like perfectly slid on the counter and I didn't <laughs> drop it. And it was like one of the best, most epic saves I ever had in my life. <laughs> Look at this guy. Yeah, my real life. That was that was that was a good memorable time. <laughs> Bro, I would spill shit, and you spill shit on you, and you gotta wear that for the rest of the fucking the night. Yeah, especially, especially with, there. You guys used to have to wear the white shirts. Yeah, well, I was even talking about other restaurants in general, but bartending specifically. If I get like 
dude, there was one time I was bartending at Tiki Lounge over by South uh, South Fin, and I was making like, I think it was espresso martini or choke martini, whatever it was. There was Bailey's in it, and I spilled it on my fucking pants, dude. It looked like I had a huge white stain on my pants, <laughs> and I'm behind the bar. There's nothing I can do about it. It just, it was like you know when you try to scrub with like a paper towel or a napkin, like that worse. material. Yes. Starts getting on it. Yeah. And then it started to crust up. And I'm like, yo, I did not. I did not, guys. I promise. <laughs> but it looked like it a lot. So it was funny shit. But that's some bullshit. I also fucking, this is something that bothers me so much. This is a little bit of a change of topic that I was just going to talk about. That's cool. Because I was just about to change it and ask you a different question. So I'll keep it. Yeah. Going. What's up? No, no, no. Again, I'll keep it prime. I was going to say, when I fucking waited tables, I hated waiting tables with kids. It was miserable. There was shit everywhere. Everywhere. Spaghetti all over the floor. Crayons. Crayon march all over the goddamn table. Those parents just needed a break from cooking that night, man. They they, they know they clean that shit up at home every day. Trust me. So why do I got to clean it up now? They ain't my kids. I feel bad for you. Trust me. But they they needed that break. And they leave like 6%. And, and it's funny because back then I would never think like that. I only think like yeah, that. Yeah, now and I understand and I know the other side. But yeah, but I get what you're saying. This is where it comes in because you've been on that side. You're now on this side. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I'll give no, it. Back then, there's an extra twenty guy. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Back then, it didn't want me. I'm like before now we leave, I'm very me. like same thing. Like you said, I'm very like, like uh, just from always working in the restaurant business. I always stack the plates. So like when everybody's done or like people are done, I always like stack stuff up for the. Do that shit so too, bro. Come. Anytime I go out, my shit stacked in the, the middle stack of the and not have to do the stuff, and it saves them that extra minute. You know what I mean? It's also a way that I feel service suck nowadays. It's like if you don't do that, that's like my signals for like come pick my shit up off my table. Yeah, that's true too. When and you see I'm plates stacked on my table, that means come pick this shit up, please. No, I hear you. In but the so nicest way possible. When I'm doing that, I'm done. If the Shoo-shoo. kids like spill stuff on the floor or whatever. I'm like the type of person or like Karen's the type of person. We'll, I'll usually pick stuff up and like clean it up a little bit and put, you know what I mean? On right. the pile of stuff that I made, whatever. So it's less for them because exactly. Bro, I'm, I'm talking like spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> on the floor. I got, I can't even vacuum that shit Alfredo up. Alfredo ravioli. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, sauce on the rug. Dude, there's, it's fucking <laughs> crusting on the wood or whatever you're sitting on. And Vicky, like, what are you like, doing? Hey, there's a wet bag. Bro, it's between the, the cushions bro. and shit. <laughs> You know, see, you know. <laughs> That's okay, horrible. Motherfucker. Um, Bro. All right, so wait. My ahead. question was going to be, do either of you have a customer that was so terrible for you to deal with that sticks out that you remember? And if so, what did they do to you? Okay, so first off, I'm going to divert that question <laughs> and answer my own question. <laughs> There's a guy- <laughs> fucking guy who makes his own <laughs> rules. <laughs> Like, I'm it's never opposite. asking a question either again, Joe. I'm never Hold asking on. a question. It's Dan, Dan, you're just going to avoid him. It's not, it's not a customer that I hate. It's a customer that I love. When I worked at Miller's, there was this guy, Ed, that would come in. He was an older guy, maybe 76. Shout out, Ed. I didn't say you had to drop a name for this, by the way. I didn't this one to. is, this guy is worth dropping a name. All right. He'd come in every Tuesday and Thursday, and all like clockwork. He would, he was an older guy. I would, he would talk wisdom to me. I'd be behind the bar bullshitting with him. I'd buy him drinks and he would sit down and eat. He'd tell me about like his whole life and shit. He was like a fantastic guy. He told me to watch this movie. Uh, Fucking forgot the name of the movie, but it's with Harrison Ford. No. Gene. Who's the fucking guy from uh, Gene Hackman? No, Richard Gere, Richard Gere, not Gene. I'm sorry, Richard Gere and his dog. And the dog follows him to work every day. The guy winds up dying and the dog still waits for him. Long story short, the movie had an incredible message behind it. I'm not going to get into it, but I miss that guy, Ed, because I don't see him anymore. And he instilled a lot of love and positivity in all the wait staff. He'd always come over like, oh, sweetheart, how are you? But not in like a weird, creepy way, more like, a, oh, this is my grandpa type of way. And it really, that guy stood out in my life. And I made a great connection with him. He gave me his phone number. Cool story, bro. Thanks, Thanks for telling us about that entertaining person that, you know, I addressed. And he's always got to give us some happy, soft, oh, good boy I'm never shit asking stories. another question again. Can you answer the question that I gave you now? Like, now that you said that? And you got I, the I don't even give a shit. What? You don't have anyone? There's, no, no, there's no one that you remembered that pissed you off when you were working ever in 15 years that you were like, yo, I, that person just don't, like, F them for what they just said, did, or nothing ever? 
bro, I don't show my emotion. Mm, never mind. <laughs> I don't necessarily get angry at shit like that. I let it go because at the end of the, look, at the end of the day, I spent more part of my life bartending than serving. So I overhear a lot of shit. And yeah, I keep things to my mind. I'm like, fuck that person. But in reality, like, what am I going to do? I don't, nothing sticks out. I mean, there's been a lot of times I've seen right, so couples at the bar. Again, since you're making this so difficult. I'm What's sorry, the worst I'm making thing it difficult. What customers ever done to you while you were serving or bartending? Done to me? Yeah. Joe, can you go first? I don't have any shit. Nobody does anything to me in the kitchen. <laughs> the worst they That's do is I'd fucking bring back my house, thing. You interact with the D. D. Jerks and when I did, when I did serve, I never really, you know. All right. I so know. I never served a bartender for long, so that's why I'm asking. Like 15 years of serving, you've met a lot of jerks and stuff like that. You don't have anybody that sticks out or that you remember that was like so over the top jerk that you were like you that guy's day. There's been some times where I could recall, but like I don't let shit like that bother me, especially in the restaurant. Right. You can't. But there's been times where I hmm. brought something over and the guy is just like. What are you, a moron? This is what I said and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, um, excuse me, you did say right, that. That shit comes kind of often. So it's like. So it's, it's, I, you can't really get mad at shit like that. But there's been times where people send back drinks and they're like, yeah, it tastes like shit. I'm like, dude, it's a fuck. I don't taste the alcohol. Like, it's a Long Island iced tea, man. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm one of those people, though, too, just because, like, when I'm home. If I make something like a drink, I put like a splash of club soda in my gin or what. So there are times where I'll go out and I'll be like, yo, this is kind of weak. Can you give me a little more gin? You know what I mean? So, but I'm also a basic drinker, like, you know, gin and tonic or beer or whatever. Uh, Yeah. I'm not, I'm not like a complicated mixed drink type of person. I very randomly, I mean, very rarely uh, get Long Island iced teas. I like them. I have a question for you guys. I'll get it with you. No, I'm just saying, I'll just get the Long Island with Sprite instead of Coke. Mm. What's your question, Joe? I need my best shit. Joe Blow. Okay, so it's been a while since we worked in the restaurant industry, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Danny, you bartend still, but I'm talking about like work in the industry like we like used full to. Full time, yeah. Now, being at the age that you are, would you go back and do serving all over again? Yeah. I like even now? Like to start at a career now or like would I go back and still I mean, make that just choice? Just call it a second job. I'm not saying I it's solid your... cash. I mean, yes, obviously now I still bartend, so I do make the cash on the side, but even forget like... it, forget about the cash, dude. Forget about the money part of it. Would you go back to serving again? That's it. Forget about everything else around it, your job or this. Just would you serve again? Giving the opportunity. Yeah. (laughs) Fred, don't get it. That was an inside joke that you made. That we tried to tell you about, but you didn't get it. That was good. I went. All right. right. So, yeah, Frank, would you go back into it? Yeah. Joe, what about you? Would you go back? Would you be a cook yeah. or would you be a server? The things right. that I learned, the relationships Ooh. I made. Like, yeah, dude. Absolutely. Like was- I would do I cooking like- because I would push it forward more as far as becoming professional with it. Call okay. it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would you like to mean? do that. Yeah. That because means- like I already have like all that firsthand experience in a kitchen and I like cooking. I still cook all the time. I just feel but, like it's very uh, hard yeah. for like a chef to become famous. They're very far and few between. It's like like becoming famous for as a musician or like anything else to me. Well, it's not it's always about being famous, that. man. It's just I think what it's I'm saying a well so salaried chef is hard to come by. Like, even but you just gotta be good. Chef, I mean, I was you only know? a sous chef at one uh, catering hall, but even when I was a sous chef, like. I didn't make like insane money. You know what I mean? It, it was, but you it, can, it like, you can very but easily, but I'm just saying you have to, get, yeah, like, I'm not talking about food. working at a Carabas or fucking Outback yeah, no, or Fridays. I, no, I hear what you're saying. I know that, but I'm saying, I still feel like there's a lot of lucky. really you have to be one of those people that gets lucky to hit that job. Like majority of the people don't get that. No, I, I guess not. It is hard to get into a really well-known place that's or a well-paid well, you got to sure go to mean. school for it and go to culinary school and learn Dude, your shit. I went I you worked, know your shit. My man. boy Pete went to culinary school, worked at the same catering hall as me, made less money than me when he started there. 
Well, fucking guy yeah, shouldn't went to catering hall. hall to work. Yeah, <laughs> he no, should have went somewhere else. Saying, no offense, if, but I'm saying even if just because you have a, a culinary degree, it's not the same like other jobs where it matters as in the sense of having a degree. Bro, a lot of chefs actually no. Wait, 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 I believe Col- Vegas. Wait, you're gonna let, go there with a the resume. It's gonna see the culinary school. On no, there. that's what I'm saying. A lot okay. of chefs will look at. Listen to me. Let me finish my. Sentence. I'm listening to you. I'm a lot of chefs shit. will actually look. I'm at you listening to you. Oh, you had you went to culinary school. <laughs> culinary school because in culinary school they teach you like how to make a bechamel sauce, what mise en place is, what this is, what that. They teach you. Frank, the, did you go to culinary specifics. school? But you need to know I, shit like that finish. when you're a cook. I went for four months. I didn't finish. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But regardless, they teach you the specifics of certain things of how much this gets for this, what this recipe entails, what the difference between this sauce and that sauce is and blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you spend the first amount of time, let me finish my fucking point. I'm going to fuck you up in three weeks. If you spent the same amount of time as you did in the culinary school, in the real world, learning hands-on, you would probably get more better experience in being a cook or a chef. More better experience? More better experience? (laughs) Yeah, more better. Better, whatever. You would get better experience. A much being better hands on. Experience. Yeah, whatever. It's okay, Frank. Hands on you, and man. learning that way than Frank going opinion. to culinary school, Frank getting out of culinary school, and then going to a line and being shell shocked when you get thirty tickets for the first right. Time. Okay, that's understandable. You know I mean? But so, if you're gonna go to culinary school, don't leave and then go to a fucking catering hall. That's when you would go. No, but even to the even, even if places. you went to Carabas, you still got thirty tickets. But these are chain restaurants. Point is, I'm coming out of about- culinary school is not that doesn't mean you're a good chef or a good cook it just means you have knowledge about ingredients and recipes is that which nowadays you don't need to go to culinary school you could look up and study that shit on your own on the internet learn about all the different recipes all the different stuff and still be just as good as a cook that or a chef that went to culinary school for nine months or 18 months or whatever program they chose and learned from another chef you could still learn from another chef and not pay for it and learn on the internet and learn all that stuff while you were getting firsthand experience and end up being better than the guy that just came out of culinary school and wasted your money for it. I'm just saying, to me, culinary degrees don't mean shit. Oh, They don't. It's a nine-month program that you learn some stuff that you could have looked up anyway. Is it a degree or is it a certification? It's more of a certification in my opinion, but it is a degree technically. So to me, like like I said, you could look that stuff anywhere nowadays and learn about it. And if you wanted to learn about it and teach yourself, Yo, you should uh, start you to pay for it. Just start what, Danny? I was say start. I should look at get my culinary. Yeah. You get your culinary I know, degree. I know, I know. Do something. <laughs> <That'd be funny. laughs> uh, Joe, uh, he's moving on good. to you because he tried to get me into the gym for the last like three years, and now that I'm finally working out, he needs to move on to get someone else to do something. <laughs> Motivation, like that fire under your ass. Oh, you funny, dude. <sighs> Yo, that was good. I like reminiscing on old times like this stuff. Absolutely. It's good times. Good times. Absolutely, man. Oh, man. All right. Well, listen, thank you, everybody, for the likes, listens, shares, and follows. We appreciate it. Specialistnothing.com. Go check it out. Oh, we got a website. I did mention it last week on the last episode, but still, please go check out our website, specialistnothing.com. It is our new home base. Please check out our bios too. We're very hard on them. No, they're awesome. I, I, I Danny don't... really wants you to see his bio. Please go check out the bio <laughs> section on our website. Sorry, we we actually did have to make him shorten it too. <laughs> That's a true fact. No, but it has all our social links on there, so we don't have to keep saying what they all are and everything. Just go to specialsnothing.com. Check out all our stuff, please. That's it. Thank you very much, guys. We're hitting. I don't know what I was gonna say. We're hitting, <laughs> <laughs> we're hitting the freeway. I don't know. Oh, what a shot. oh, oh what a God. God. I'm getting out of here. That's what you say. Oh man, that was good. Honestly, I know we have a lot of awkward send offs, but I'm not taking this one out. That was the best one ever. We're hitting the freeway tonight, boys. <laughs> have a good night.